The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Our next speaker is going to be Keith Kessner, and uh, Keith is going to talk about adoption of the repair code. In my involvement with uh, Vision 2020, uh, the development of the repair code was uh, one of our goals, and now that the code has been developed, uh, our primary focus from now until 2020 is actually achieving adoption of the code. So. Uh, Keith, Keith has great pressure on him right now to get adoption of the code everywhere. Thank you, David. Thanks to all, everybody for coming out. I'm going to mainly stay here behind the podium, and I'm going to use this cool green laser that David provided to us because it's really cool. I'm going to specifically talking about adoption of ACI 562 into the IEBC, IEBC family of codes and it's time for this to occur. So we've heard a couple presentations already. Um, as we, let me say one more thing as we get started. I currently am the chair of ACI 562. I have that job for about another six months, then someone else gets my position, and the huge salary that I get paid. I'm also a senior project manager, work with CBM engineers, work every day with Tracy Marcotte on a lot of different projects, and it gives us a lot of working together. It gives us a lot of opportunity to talk about different things and to talk about different ways that we can improve concrete repair practice. And so we've, when I was setting this up, I wanted to get different perspectives on what's wrong with concrete repair practice. And it starts that, as Larry talked about, there's a huge focus, and it's on new design and education. And that's great. Then, even when you get into into, pra into practice, a lot of our design practices, even in our own office, don't consider myself an engineer because I predominantly focus on existing structures. I don't actually design anything every day. I don't build RAM element models every day, so I'm not actually an engineer. Um, and that's, that's people I work with every day. Not Tracy, not, D not Dave Van Acker. Um, that's people I work with every day. So even our d own friends in the industry don't consider us real engineers. So what, because of that, they never get involved and actually understand some of the structures that they designed and built, as Tarek and, Tarek and Chuck both explained. And then there's the special group of historic preservationists. They don't like people that focus on existing structures either because they're historic preservationists and they're, they're like more like pristine lab animals. They have a very distinct pristine focus that they want to focus on and preserve certain elements of certain structures and they could care less about a parking garage unless it was built in 1922 by a very famous architect. Then they may be interested in it, maybe. So they don't really care about what we do either. Contractors, there's a lot of them out there, Tarek. I love Tarek, I love structural. A lot of them don't focus on quality. That's a huge problem. But the one I want to focus on today is US national codes. There's two major ones. There's all sorts of state codes out there, but predominantly we're working with the IBC and the IEBC. And I think the IBC does a nice job establishing a standard of care for repair, but the IEB, excuse, IEBC does a nice job as a standard of care for repair, but that's a simple problem in a lot of respects. The IEBC is the one I want to focus on, and I think there's a huge problem with that because it's not specific enough with respect to creating a standard of care and with repair. So, yes, sir. Sure. Yes. It's the international, and, and you're and also Canadian. It's the International Bus Building Code. International Existing Building Code. And the, the important focus word should be on international because it's a U.S. code <laughs> and U.S. implies international in their world. Um, it's kind of like the world, very much like the World Series, yes. You're learning how it works, it's good. So, the, <laughs> no problem. So where does the need for ICI 562 come from? 
the biggest piece of it is it establishes a standard of care for new design. What does a standard of care really mean? It's easy if you're doing new design, you follow a code. But on a repair project, really what should that be? How much evaluation is present, needs to be done? What's going on? Why is this a problem? And Kyle, this is your graphic that I modified a little bit with the colors. And why is this a problem? This is a normal structure. Our structures design for some certain period of time, but that service life doesn't really stop. We're dealing with structures now consistently, design in the 40s, design in the 50s, design in the 60s. Nobody's planning to take them out of service because they got to some 50 year period. And our deterioration doesn't stop. They're continuously exposed. So every structure we have should be progressing on some, on some normal line. Some level of deterioration over time is going to occur. We do maintenance and repairs. And our concept is we're always going to want to keep our structures in this nice green zone. Some structures are in bad shape. Maybe the ones that Tarek and Chuck were talking about. They got back up into the yellow zone. Maybe some demolition was warranted. We definitely want to keep them out of the green, out of this red zone. But what we're typically doing is repairs, maintenance, and we're bringing our structures back into the green zone. We're trying to keep them there. We know repairs are going to be required on structures. The questions that we have is when we're working with our codes, are our codes providing us the information to get proper durability of, the, of a repaired structure? And are those repaired structures actually safe? And now how do we get a standard of code from a, how do we get a standard of care from a code? Let's think about this. It's generally defined, and this is something that um, ACI 132 is working on. It's generally defined as the level of um, effort that a normal, prudent, licensed design professional, to explain the acronym, would be expected to provide. It's pretty simple. The problem with existing structures is you got no idea what's going on with them a lot of times. So how do you establish a level of care? This is a flood control channel out in um, Ventura, California. When we started doing some actual probes, it was previously shored before we got involved with it. We did some probes. And one of the areas that we found was broken rebar, broken rebar, broken rebar. Broken rebar after broken rebar after broken rebar. It's not a problem if there's no load on it, but it's got some significant soil plus some significant trucks. What's the standard of care necessary for doing an evaluation of that structure? We took a lot of effort to do these probes. What's the prudent level of standard of care? What's the level of reliability that that structure has in its current situation? What should it be as a repaired structure? And what does my code tell me that it should be? So I work at the IEBC. And really, what's, what do I think is missing? A lot of pieces. How bad is a structure? IBC doesn't really tell me how to evaluate that. Analysis considerations. If I'm doing analysis of a structure, I'm focusing on the I feel bad for the, there's too bad, there's no, is there anybody here that's a precast that feels bad about double T garages right now? <laughs> so a lot of examples of broken double T garages. But Chuck and Tarek on the examples that they were showing had a pretty simple problem. It was obvious that one member was damaged. But what if there are multiple members that damaged? How far should I go in my analysis? Do I have to take it down? Does my analysis have to go down to the foundation? Do I need to consider lateral in those repairs? What's the level of reliability of that repair structure? What else doesn't the IBC tell me? It tells me nothing about durability, nothing about service life, and nothing about really doing construction quality assurance. All of those things are missing. What else is there? I challenge anybody to read this statement, which is directly from the IEBC, and this one, and come up with when a structure, an existing structure that has damage, in terms of coming up with a demand to capacity ratio, is actually unsafe. When does something actually become unsafe? It's really hard to figure it out from the IBC. And these are a lot of the questions that we tried to answer um, with the ACI 562. So we had some confusing definitions. So what do, we, what do we create? We created a code for repair of existing structures as an ACI standard. It's not a guide, not a suggested practice, not maybe it's a good idea you do that. No, we created a standard. We wanted to provide a lot of clarity for the design professionals. We wanted to create a very flexible document. 
We wanted to make something that's clear. The code itself, the way it was written, we wanted to encourage the design professional to evaluate the existing structure. There's some, there's some nice benefits in terms of doing fee factors, uh, higher fee factors when you're doing the evaluation so you can get a better strength. But import, most importantly, we wanted to provide design professionals a clear path where we have sustainable repaired structures. You always hear about people talking about sustainability, but sustainability comes from um, actually not tearing down structures and, re and having to create all new. That's the ultimate in sustainability, and we want to create an easy way for the design professionals to do that. So let's talk about HCI 562, just on simple things, unsafe conditions. Obvious, the two, these two are obvious. We also spent a lot of time creating this definition for an unsafe structural condition. Based upon reliability principles, we're taking demand, we're adding this is limited to gravity and wind loads, we're looking at current capacity, and we're comparing them into this 1.5 number. The 1.5 number was actually derived from a reliability analysis using that IEBC definition. If people are interested, there's a paper that's been published on this that they can read in Concrete International. So we're answering some of these questions that the IEBC does not provide an answer to. So what are we doing? We're establishing a minimum standard for repairs, clear requirements, assessment, sustainable. And this is the most important piece of this. We've been working on this for a couple years now, and we're at a point where we have a couple fully developed supporting documents. So that not only do you have a code, you have the guide to the use of. It's another document jointly published with our friends at ICRI. Nice worked example problems, clear explanations of some of our code jargon. It gives you a real idea how to use the actual document. Further, even more information for the design professionals that want to know how to use ACI 562. We have 11 articles that were published in Concrete International. If anybody's interested, email me. I'll send you all of them as a single PDF that Rex put together. 11 articles that explain exactly how to use it. It's a fully developed set of requirements now with documents that, exp that explain how to use it. So what are we going to do with that? We're going to try and now, for the third time in 2019, get us into the 2021 IEBC. Um, we've tried in the past. We tried in 2013. We tried in 2016. And the failure, that failure was really from opposition due to, we'll call them individual people. Those are people that are against the concept of a code, that don't understand the purpose of a code, don't understand some of the limitations that design professionals involved and prepared have. And I'll go through the process, and this is a little bit of a plea for help with the process. So it starts with four steps. Code change proposal, Mike Tholen, Matt Senecal, Steve Zocramaci, I work on that. Structural review committee hearing. We got past the step once, got bumped out the second time. Finally, code official balloting, two-step balloting process. We haven't gotten past that one. And then finally, get adoption if you get past all four. Um, so we're going to start that in 2019. What have we done to date? How many people live in Ohio? Nobody. Ohio, starting in August, adopted ACI 562. Hawaii adopted ACI 562 statewide. You can also use ACI 562 using an alternate procedure and with, with approval from a code official. But what we really need is full adoption into the IBC 2021 edition. We do need support. So my, in how, do, how would you support it? How would you support this effort? Talk to structural engineers. Tell them through any means possible that ACI 562 is a good idea. Why? Our current repair practice, Chuck, Larry, Tarek, They've explained it, that the current, current practice isn't working. Our repairs are failing. The stuff that's in the IBC, it's not enough. And as design professionals doing repairs, we need, I shouldn't have said that. We design professionals, we need help with design of repairs. We don't necessarily like, need psychiatric help or anything. But <laughs> we do need help. So that's the end of my presentation. And I'll hold questions for later. So thank you.